this is its mental class. Today we have our guest Lucy. Today is a little bit special because for the first time, Lucy is not a comedian. So Lucy, if you are not a comedian, what are you? Who are you? Hi. Um. So I'm a singer and Ooh. performer. Um. And I'm a life coach for artists and creatives and people who. Generally, seek some support. Wow, cool! What do you sing? Um, so I have a background in musical theater mm -hmm. and kind of like the lighter genres of music. But um, mm -hmm. as a hobby, I sing a lot of classical music at the mm -hmm. moment. And um, for non-hobby purposes, I sing more like pop music or jazz music or background kind of things. Wow! Yeah, cool. So. Yeah. Um, you are a singer and also a writer? Performer. Performer. Yeah. So what do you perform? Um, at the moment, not so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I I haven't, like the performer part is part singer, but uh -huh. also kind of like the theater part. Uh -huh. I have some ambitions to mm -hmm. put up a show again, maybe with a small group of people. Uh -huh. um, so I guess I could say that I identify with the performer part. Mm -hmm mostly at this point mm -hmm. but it's not so mm -hmm. it's not so active but um yeah i'm a performer performer at heart <laughs> <laughs> so what's stopping you to put the show on um good question well easy excuses mm -hmm. the pandemic ah, okay but i think i've just been you know busy with with changing my career path and mm -hmm. building a business mm -hmm. and um that was not as a performer. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking of um, going into clowning next. Wow, <laughs> that's so cool. I, I really want to learn that also. Yeah. Like, um, uh, what's this thing called? Uh, mime. Yeah, I... I pa pantomime. Yeah, I, I re I'm really interested to that, but yeah. I, I think uh, um, it's... Uh, I need to get something else done before that can come at the top of my priority oh, yeah. but i think that that would be super fun yeah 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 i agree i i have kind of a secret dream of doing clowning in hospitals mm -hmm. and like care homes mm -hmm. or places where where children are mm -hmm. that could uh, use a laugh mm -hmm. or use some empathy maybe mm -hmm. um i've seen i've seen them work a mm -hmm. couple of times and it's amazing uh -huh. how what they can do with uh -huh. with so little and i yeah. just uh yeah I, oh. it's also not right for right now but yeah. it's not maybe yeah. not too far in the future oh cool <laughs> i also want to learn juggling juggling yeah. yeah oh i know the right person for that oh cool yeah. i'll contact you at the time i think juggling would be really it's a very good way for mental health so like ah. to put you in a flow mode mm like a really relax and use your right side of the brain. Yeah. Yeah, I I want to explore that. Yeah, cool. So you, you talk about you're building a business. What, what's your business about? Yeah, so I'm building a business as a transformational life coach. Mm -hmm. And I work at this moment a lot with artists and creatives and mm -hmm. people who want to change career, mm -hmm. um, either to an artistic mm -hmm. profession or mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm doing that since about one and a half years and um, it's been interesting <laughs> I mean, wow. building building something from from nothing you know yeah. when you start it, it something is. something new and also in, in the times we are in right now yeah. but it's been super challenging uh -huh. and scary and exciting uh -huh. all at the same time but I'm I'm finding right now since since recently that I'm kind of finding my flow of things you know, mm -hmm. in the beginning it's all like what am I going to do what do I need to do where am I supposed to be mm -hmm. what, what kind of stage am I supposed to be in looking kind of at business advice mm -hmm. um, yeah and I'm, I'm like I said I'm starting to feel mm -hmm. okay what does this mean for me to build a business mm -hmm. what is transformational uh, coaching coaching yeah mm -hmm. so um, Traditionally, I would say life coaching or coaching is a place where you, where you figure out what your goals are mm -hmm. and how to get there. It's mm -hmm. you know a very black and white mm -hmm. summary. Tr 
transformational coaching the way I see it is um, taking that as well mm -hmm. but looking at um, why do I want that mm -hmm. what does it mean to me mm -hmm. um, why haven't I gotten there yet what have I tried so you're kind of like looking mm -hmm. under the surface of um, what it means to you to reach those goals and mm -hmm. what might get in the way mm -hmm. um, sometimes you find out that you think you want something because I don't know it will give you some kind of prestige and then you mm -hmm. realize actually what I want is this mm -hmm. but yeah it's way too scary to admit that <laughs> how, how did you uh, come up with uh, uh, the idea of uh, changing to be a transformational coach from a singer yeah so I was not working as a singer before mm -hmm. I studied music theater okay. and then got depressed mm -hmm. and overwhelmed and mm -hmm. anxious. I mean, that was a buildup of years, but mm -hmm. at some point I had to stop mm -hmm. that because of severe anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went off to do something else. I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore, mm -hmm. apparently. Um, and I went to university, got a bachelor's degree. Mm -hmm. And from then on, I just went into working life. And I mm -hmm. worked in classical music, in a museum, mm -hmm. um, all kind of different roles I had in mm -hmm. arts-related mm -hmm. places <laughs> that were all kind of really, really under-challenging. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I always was at some place and then I thought, oh, no, this is not what it is. This is not what I want to do, but what mm -hmm. do I want to do? And I got into this crisis of what do I want to do? I mm -hmm. have no idea. I don't, I don't know who, mm -hmm. who I am anymore, even mm -hmm. is what I thought at some point. So, yeah, that kind of spiraled. Mm -hmm. um, and th I'm talking about a period of 10 years. Oh, so, wow. basically from when I quit my studies as a mm -hmm. performer, or to become a performer, until... A year ago mm -hmm. um, wow can't believe that's been 10 years yeah I was I was in a searching mode mm -hmm. I was like l constantly asking mm -hmm. myself what do you want to do what do you want to do you know there's this pressure on mm -hmm. us on a lot of us mm -hmm. that you have to define who you are and what you want out of life because we have so many possibilities and options um, and I really felt that pressure because yeah I think it's it's just a thing of our times and yeah sorry you say like uh, over a period of 10 years yeah. you, you've been asking yourself this question were you aware of uh, you were asking these questions or the conversation become more clear over time uh, then uh, or yeah, during right. the 10 years is there some change of the intensity yeah that's really interesting I think it was ebb and flow mm -hmm. so and it went hand in hand with peaks of anxiety and, and mm. like mellower kind mm. of periods. I think what happened was after I quit these studies, I did mm. not take my time to recover mm -hmm. and to learn that um, to be okay again mm -hmm. and to not be anxious and mm -hmm. to really dig a little bit more deeper into mm. who I was and what I wanted to do. I just went, okay, I, I need to get away from here. Mm -hmm. I turned around, never looked back. Oh. And then what happened was I, yeah, there was kind of like fear of failure as well. Mm -hmm. So I under challenged myself in a way by taking mm. jobs that were under challenging, but I also mm. didn't continue my studies to be kind of qualified for mm. jobs that would have fitted me better. Mm -hmm. So um, where was I going with this? I think the development was that actually I got more and more anxious mm -hmm. because you know nothing seemed to fit mm -hmm. or match my feeling. Like I was waiting for Eureka. I was literally mm -hmm. waiting for this aha moment mm -hmm. where I would be like, this is what I need to do with my life. Mm -hmm. And that never came. <laughs> Did you, did you know that uh, what you were doing is not what you want to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, every job I had two weeks mm -hmm. in, I was like, no, this is not it. And then I would stay uh -huh. because what else was I going to do? Uh -huh. So eventually I even, you know, 
I was so anxious mm -hmm. and so stressed all the time and I, I've, I've been having sleeping ch challenging challenges sleeping for a long time as well I think I don't know if this is <laughs> if people recognize this but th there is something like a bore out mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. where you 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 think you cannot handle something so you mm -hmm. do less so you get mm -hmm. more bored and you mm -hmm. therefore you get more anxious mm -hmm. and if you don't if you don't get challenged you never get the satisfaction mm -hmm. of stretching your mm -hmm. limits or mm -hmm. uh, pushing your boundaries or mm -hmm. even taking a small step out of your comfort zone I was kind of like retreating, retreating, retreating mm -hmm. into my comfort zone uh, until, yeah, mm -hmm. until it, it was enough. <laughs> yeah, like you, you talk about uh, anxious, like yeah. uh, uh, how do you define anxious? How, what, what's the uh, symptom you have? Mm -hmm. Then you, how do you know it's anxious? I, I think this question sounds stupid, but uh, I come from China, uh, yeah. we don't really the uh, access our f emotions so to be honest i really didn't know i didn't have the concept of what is anxiety or being anxious means yeah so i i am quite curious about how others know like how did you know the feeling you had was uh, anxiety yeah how did you know it's not normal yeah so the dutch and German words, if I'm correct, mm. for anxiety are basically fear, angst. Mm -hmm. And I think I was in a constant state of fear. Mm -hmm. My, For me, it showed up and it does, still does show up as nervousness, as mm -hmm. constant, constantly paying attention of all the threads. Mm -hmm. So the way I kind of phrased it together with a psychologist mm -hmm. was like, I have this radar that is always mm -hmm. on and every human has their survival brain so you mean you are on the fleet uh, flight uh, yeah fight exactly or f flight uh, mode all the time yeah exactly where mm. i was going like this this survival brain that constantly checks you know is there is there a bear is there a lion mm. ahead um you constantly need to be on the lookout and that's mm -hmm. literally how i felt so that also meant that my attention and my awareness was always outside of myself was always on external things and external mm. people well people mm. um yeah so i think that's that's the anxiety that um how it showed up for me and mm -hmm. it, and specifically um in mornings when mm. i wake up i wake up or used to wake up with a mm. super high heart rate mm -hmm. um also in the night things seem so much worse than during the day mm -hmm. and um i think yeah i think that's how it was for me. It's not like I was socially anxious. I mm -hmm. wasn't even anxious for performing, mm -hmm. but I was anxious when I was alone mm -hmm. and when my time was undefined mm -hmm. or yeah, when I had to do my under challenge jobs where mm -hmm. I was like, I don't even know what to do because is this really all I need to do? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. what, what do you, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You, you say when you are alone, you, when you were alone, yeah. you were anxious. W what's the symptom? Like, because anxious is just a word. Yeah. But when you were sitting there, like, what did you experience? Mm. Um, nervousness. So mm -hmm. heart, high heart rate, nervousness, high mm -hmm. breath, constantly trying to distract yourself, mm -hmm. um, feeling like you're going to have a panic attack. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of like panic panic mm -hmm. thought over panic thought um yeah. do you have a small example so i think oh, a small example you mean if i would be sitting at home and being alone yeah, yeah. and the discomfort thoughts uh, running uh, in your mind do you have some small example yeah like so i think what was the basic assumption in my head was like something's wrong okay oh my god something's wrong uh -huh. i need to fix this uh -huh. and and i would immediately go into fixing mode uh -huh. which would mean um you know it would it mm. would um i would project it on stuff uh -huh. like oh my god the bathroom it's a mess and uh -huh. i need to clean this now uh -huh. which you know it probably wasn't really a mess uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but um i would externalize like this something is wrong uh -huh. like the basic assumption was always there uh -huh. And I needed to be
be on top of it mm-hmm. and fix it like and it in how, the butt. how did you know this is not uh, normal <laughs> how did you know this is not part of your personality yeah i think um because i i saw people around me having fun mm-hmm. You know, having fun is not mm-hmm. something that was in my vocabulary or in, or in my default life experience. And I, I think that that is since, you know, beginning of high school or even mm-hmm. earlier where I would just be like, you know, there's there's more important stuff. You know, there mm-hmm. might be danger. Mm-hmm. Something might be wrong that needs to be fixed. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you see your... your um, you know, people your age just having fun and mm. being foolish and doing the things teenagers do or that people in their 20s do. And I would always be, I would just literally always be nervous. Mm. Yeah. And at one point, have you thought this is just you? Or you always know it's, uh, you haven't found the moment? Because it's, uh, let's make an analogy. like. Mm. Lots of women, they cannot get an orgasm. Yeah. But uh, if they tried for like 20 years, many of them would think, okay, it's just me. I yeah. am not capable of getting it. But many of them later, maybe in their 40s, like they start to get an orgasm. So uh, the point is, how do you know one point? How do you know hey, this thing can be changed? Mm-hmm. This is not part of me. Uh, I think... After many, many try and the time lasts, it's very hard to have the faith to, to believe that uh, it can be changed. Yeah. And uh, very easy, people just accept, oh, okay, this is how life is. Yeah. Now, that's a, such an interesting question. Thanks for posing it. Um, I think for me, I always knew there is more to me. Mm-hmm. I've, there had been glimpses, you know. Mm-hmm. I've mm-hmm. had also a great time being mm-hmm. a performer and mm-hmm. studying that and mm-hmm. uh, also before. But um, as you were talking, I realized that... What, would, what did I realize? Sorry. Um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. It will come back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... I knew it. I knew it wasn't me, but I was always looking for the answer of how to fix myself outside mm-hmm. of myself. Mm-hmm. So I was always, you know, looking for someone or something or some therapist or some method or some book mm-hmm. to fix me to mm-hmm. have the ultimate eureka answer. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> and that never came, you know. Mm-hmm. And I fooled. I've I've sought therapists and alternative therapies and all kind of stuff. Since one since about when I was maybe 17 Mm -hmm. and in the beginning I used to fool them you Mm -hmm. know because I fooled myself Mm -hmm. I did not want to go to that place that Mm -hmm. made me feel alone or that made me feel hurt or Mm -hmm. that made me feel so anxious Mm -hmm. Um, because that's painful you know yeah everyone knows it usually comes with a little bit of breakthrough and you Mm -hmm. feel better after but Mm -hmm. you know it takes courage to go there Mm -hmm. And then I would just say, you know, yeah, I'm feeling better. No, I don't need this anymore. And then, you know, a bit later I would be, I would be miserable again. Mm-hmm. And I think until there have been a few support, uh, you know, mental health prof- professionals or people in my support system who have mm-hmm. not taken that bullshit mm-hmm. and just been like, I think you're fooling yourself. And, uh, um, yeah, but it. I think it took me until very, very recently mm-hmm. <laughs> to see, you know, how to find the answer in your mm-hmm. inside of yourself instead of from um, someone telling me what to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, with this, like a constant uh, this a- anxiety and not having fun. At one point, did it? Did you internalize some of this? And uh, did did it? It hurt your like self perception. Did it hurt my self perception? Like, um, did you at one point think, okay, it's just something wrong with me, and mm. uh, it, I'm broken, I cannot be changed, or something? Uh, just 
um, stop to, to lo losing the hope of mm -hmm. it can be changed? Yeah, now that you're saying this, I think there have been a few moments mm -hmm. where I was so overtaken by mm -hmm. this idea that mm -hmm. I think I always thought I would there was something wrong or I was mm -hmm. broken. But that's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. If we keep telling ourselves we're yeah. broken, yeah. how are we how are we supposed to heal? Mm -hmm. Because there because there's always this focus on mm -hmm. on what's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm deriving from your question, but um, yeah, to come back to your question, I've, I've had that, but I, I think it never took over fully. I always mm -hmm. had some part of me somewhere deep down that thought, okay, this is, this is not me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the way I tried to get out of it was not very productive. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in this long 10 years period, um you you always had this uh, like feeling of uh, it's not right did you paint to your job paint the the lifestyle at the beginning or it was a recent thing you realized oh this is a job i really cannot do it this is the reason um like Sorry, did i what to my job because you 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 say like uh, you you've been doing jobs you don't like mm. and the challenge for 10 years, like every time you had a job, like two weeks, you are bored. Um, did you notice at the very beginning or oh, it's a conclusion you made afterwards? So uh, did you associate your problem, your feeling and the, the job at the very beginning? Mm. Or did it take a process to realize it? Um, most of the jobs I knew, mm. maybe even before two weeks, mm -hmm. like, yeah this is not gonna fulfill me in any way. Like mm -hmm. it's not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to do this for long. I'm not saying that your job has to fulfill you all the time, every day, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I, I don't know, I noticed quite soon. I think mm -hmm. for some of them, mm -hmm. especially the la later ones, I was like, no, you know, I can adjust, you know, mm -hmm. I just need to expect less or mm -hmm. try harder or take more initiative. So I was trying to fix mm. myself or or like make myself into something that I'm not maybe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, what happened until uh, like uh, one year ago? Yeah. So I'd been working with a psychologist already for a while. And then at some point, you know, he really tried to provoke me into, you know, what is the thing that you love doing? Mm hmm. And that has always been singing mm -hmm. and performing, but since I was already 30, I was very pessimistic around, you know, making that into my career or starting to make a career out of that when you're already 30, especially in classical music. That's just not very realistic. Mm -hmm. However, at some point I did commit to, okay, I'm going to try and make that work. And I did a project here and there and I increased like my singing lessons and stuff. And there was so much anxiety in the, in the rehearsing, like if I had to rehearse for myself. However, it did start a process of, okay, there is some other option than sticking to these boring jobs that were other challenging for me. So it kind of opened the, the gate, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, you said there are so many uh, anxiety around the rehearsal. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean? Like anxiety is one word. I don't yeah, know sorry. what it means. <laughs> so I would rehearse and and start singing a note or start singing like an exercise, and I would get super upset with how it sounded and panic. I would be like, "Oh my!" I had I would have like done it once or twice, mm -hmm. and be like, "Oh, this sounds terrible. No one is ever going to listen to that," and I would just completely panic i would almost see like the path of work that it would that it would take for me to make something of that mm -hmm. you know which is in itself a very subjective mm -hmm. thing when something is good or not um but then i would just completely freak out seeing the the mountain of work that needed to be done mm -hmm. 
Um, so yeah, nervousness and panic. This sounds like uh, the the negative voice in your mind. Yeah, yeah, totally inner critic, bastard. Yeah. yeah. Have you tried to dealing with this voice? Yeah, yeah. Over the last years, I'm, I've worked um, in some different ways, mm-hmm. um, and it's been super interesting. <laughs> yeah. But it definitely, like, there was one very, very strong judge of mm-hmm. everything I do. I could just basically never be good enough with mm-hmm. anything. I was always doing everything wrong. <laughs> what, what did you learn uh, to, to deal with this voice? How did I learn to deal with that? Uh, yeah, how did you learn and what did you learn? Uh, I mean, I think the first step was identifying and maybe understanding a bit where it comes from. Like, whose voice is that actually? Mm-hmm. Is that my voice? Is that you know, coming from somewhere else, um, and then putting it into reality. Like, if I say to myself, this is never going to work, is that true? Who's deciding that? Mm-hmm. So testing it against reality, testing it against options, but all, at the same time also um, you're finding, kind of befriending all these characters in my head. Mm-hmm. Because for me, it's not just one inner critic. There is several people on the team and or voices on the team Mm -hmm. (laughs) kind of befriending them you know giving them a bit of a character Mm -hmm. Uh, so putting them in a visualizing them Mm -hmm. what also really helped me was a really great tip I got was to um, if I had a specific thought Mm -hmm. like this is not good enough or this is never going to work I would say it out loud and start a melody like sing it mm-hmm. um, and oh. that makes that you kind of externalize it and uh, mm. when you hear it mm-hmm. 17 times it just starts sounding ridiculous mm-hmm. it's a way of laughing about yourself mm-hmm. in a healthy way kind of yeah yeah making jokes exactly yeah jokes are great. I am a comedian yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what we were talking about? Yeah, like uh, until one year ago. And yes. Uh, yeah, so the gates opened with this, you know, I'm going to go for singing. And then at some point it kind of transformed into I want to be a coach. I want to help people understand themselves better. I want to help people be brave and um, voice voice what's inside of them and, and face this inner battle of you know all these characters in your head and and you know also learning that it's okay to feel and all these things i'd learned mm-hmm. learning that it's okay to change your mind about stuff mm-hmm. so many things so many things i've learned how did you come up with this uh, career choice as a yeah. transformational coach so it had so the 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 idea of some kind of mental health professional had been on my mind, I think, m- mostly always, almost always. Mm-hmm. Uh, I once did kind of like a career test and then this lady said, no, you can never be someone like me because you don't have enough empathy. And that crushed me. Mm-hmm. And then now I'm thinking back and I was like, okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> what did she know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, and then it kind of crossed my Facebook uh, mm-hmm. feed so that's pretty creepy actually mm-hmm. and I saw this training and I and then my little eureka moment came and I was like mm-hmm. okay that's what I need to do mm-hmm. and then okay I signed up um, I started my training I started immediately kind of working with people um, you know you need to practice and mm-hmm. and that was really really amazing and kind of a lot of things clicked as well mm-hmm. being a freelancer Mm-hmm. deciding my own time deciding my own mm-hmm. my own direction and course and pace and flow mm-hmm. and everything yeah that fits me much better mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and um, uh, how did you make the decision like uh, is this is the thing you want to do and uh, you really going to make a living out of it mm. uh, did you have uh, imposter syndrome did yeah you, did how long it took you to really believe, oh, I can do this and I make a living out of it? So let's say about one and a half years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, total imposter syndrome and, and total self-doubt. Mm-hmm. And 
and you know I've been very close to finding a day job mm -hmm. a couple of months back mm -hmm. that I think it's all part of it mm -hmm. but I mean lucky for me I have a support system and you know the right people around me to mm -hmm. help me get realistic mm -hmm. also and I have my own coach so mm -hmm. um, I'm not taking it so seriously anymore mm -hmm. these thoughts and this inner critic mm -hmm. and the imposter but that has taken me mm -hmm. a long time mm -hmm. i i think it, it's uh, it's super um, uh, intimidating like uh, to choose something so new especially mm -hmm. it's uh, mm -hmm. it's a career choice is that uh, is not often seen uh, for me like uh, mm -hmm. i've been doing comedy for more than three years um like uh, thinking the way that I'm I'm really going to be a comedian like mm. uh, like full-time comedian uh, the source is always there but um, really believe in it like it, it's um, it's very very hard mm. it, part of me always think oh, maybe I cannot achieve that um, it's not realistic it's so hard uh, like Berlin we have so many comedians like uh, there's a maximum two of them, like uh, mm -hmm. fully living on comedy. But um, lately I start to realize, I think for those people who succeeded, they are not necessarily the best comedians, but they are those ones who really believe it will happen. Mm. Because you only will like uh, put your full effort and strength and uh, uh, mental capacity in it if you believe this will happen but if you always decide oh like uh, ah, just try a little bit stay here and uh, I will find a job uh, then you, you are not like fully there then you cannot you, you only need you need to have the goal in order to be there yeah so uh, today is a big uh, big day for me like um, I in the past few weeks uh, I it become more and more clear to me and today finally I scheduled my solo show and wow. of 29th of November oh, 28th wow. of November uh, Sunday evening at uh, Space Muzuza in Kreuzberg wow. I will have my solo show yeah wow congratulations yeah, it will I'm be really there my <laughs> first uh, uh, comedy special and uh, after that, I will start touring and uh, I will make it happen. Wow, wow mm -hmm. that sounds really, really cool. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I am really, really um, glad for finally I made this step. Yeah. Uh, there are lots of anxiety in between, like I fear I'm not good enough, like uh, I'm not there yet. Um, this is a big mindset I changed lately also. I, uh, I think by doing this, uh, oh, I haven't announced this news on this podcast yet. So I'm doing a project called the Berlin Mental Health Festival. Mm. So that's how we met each other. Yeah. So it will be one week of a program uh, all around mental health. And uh, uh, there will be all kinds of art form and uh, workshops and uh, art therapy and uh, self-help group. Um, yeah, it's uh, just a nice project to bring the awareness and uh, connect people. And uh, by doing this project, I really learned a big lesson. Uh, is that um, in the past, uh, I always feel I'm not good enough for something. Mm. Uh, and I read this book uh, called uh, Playing Big by mm. Tara Moore. She talked about that uh, um, uh, how to de recognize what's your really your calling in life and then she said uh, when you when you found your uh, calling in life it's very normal you think you are not good enough and you don't have the resource and you don't know how to do it and uh, it's definitely wrong there's no way you can do it uh, she said that's totally normal because uh, you you are not the person who's good enough to do uh, to follow your calling because you will only become that person why are you doing it yeah. so you can never be ready yeah you 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 will be ready while doing it so when i was
doing this project like at the beginning i thought i have nothing i have no resource i i like i i really don't have much and uh, then why once i kick off this project all the resource and the connection and the people just come to me and uh, now it's like really putting together and uh, this really gave me so much like faith and uh, confidence in other perspectives of my life also it, for, for example for my solo show i realized oh i think i'm not good enough for my solo show it's it's because uh, my solo show is not an end it's a process mm. for me to get there yeah i have to do it in order to be good at it and uh, that's that's the process and it's okay i feel i'm not good enough and yeah. it's normal and I just accept it uh, and that's not a reason or excuse for me to not do it yeah and uh, now knowing that uh, uh, i will become that person in the process uh, make make me feel less intimidating to start the process um because in the past i would think oh i will fear this and uh, i will not succeed because i'm not good enough and uh, instead of that now i think oh i'm so excited that i will learn so much and become that during the process yeah so wow. it's uh, it's really a slight um mental shift but it's very empowering yeah amen mm -hmm. So many thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I really recognize that. Mm. And for me, what comes on top of that realization, like I don't have to be all of what I want to be in 20 years mm -hmm. right now, is that I can also change my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to do this right now. And I know more or less how I want it to be. But if in five years that is different, mm -hmm. that it's okay, you know, mm -hmm. I can shift course a bit or, um, you know, what, if we always have to arrive somewhere before we, before we can really be something or, mm -hmm. or even start something that's mm -hmm. first of all impossible, but also coming back for myself to the joy element, mm -hmm. you know, if we, I imagine you're gonna have so much fun in this process of mm -hmm. building your your show now mm -hmm. that you're allowed to to play with it and mm -hmm. explore what the show is gonna be about for me as well I'm I'm having so much more fun now that I'm allowed to build this business mm -hmm. <laughs> as I want it and and ar around who I am mm -hmm. because that's that's the best thing I could offer my clients yeah. right just you know I don't have to be like another coach mm -hmm. I can be the coach that I am and um, yeah that kind of gives some more weight to yeah the why we're doing this or the purpose mm -hmm. of we're doing this rather than the the imposter thoughts or mm -hmm. any other kind of self-doubt mm -hmm. and I I really think that almost all of the successful quote-unquote mm -hmm. people um, also have these thoughts still mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think I will not have thoughts of mm -hmm. imposter syndrome mm -hmm. um, when I'm when I've arrived mm -hmm. at some point. Yeah, I think uh, what you said uh, totally uh, is relevant. I I think uh, Tara Moore. Yeah. She mentioned in her uh, book. She said that, like, um, there are lots of coach. Uh, they they teach women oh, uh, how to. Uh, uh, how to succeed in uh, uh, like a professional career yep. they always tell women to be more confident and uh, she said actually no mm. like uh, um, uh, she made an example like the best uh, female like a uh, dancer or some other professional like famous people um, they even they are that successful they also uh, told a uh, public or wrote in their books that uh, they are super insecure and they have panic attacks uh, mm -hmm. often and they question themselves very often and uh, so Tara Moore she she thinks the key is not to be confident because even the most successful women they are not confident sometimes and the key is to um, uh, despite you you are insecure you still keep doing the thing you you yeah. want to do 
Yeah, totally. And for me, I've been talking with a lot of people about confidence in groups and in individual conversations. And for me, to me, that is confidence. Mm -hmm. it, it is about recognizing mm -hmm. what you experience at mm -hmm. every moment. And that can be that can be a feeling of, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not so sure if I'm, mm -hmm. I can do this mm -hmm. or uh, wow, I'm feeling really good mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. I feel like confidence is about staying close to that mm -hmm. experience and recognizing all the the aspects about mm -hmm. it but not making decisions based mm -hmm. on these emotions mm -hmm. or these destructive thoughts mm -hmm. you're making decisions based on 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 your goals or where you want to go or mm -hmm. what what you dream about you know mm -hmm. but not um you're not getting sucked in so much mm -hmm. um yeah that's kind of what i what i've come to call for myself my inner professional mm -hmm. i think that maybe Yeah, it really resonates with what you say, what Tara Moore said as well. I think this is uh, super interesting, you know, like uh, now we are two women sharing our insecurity. Yeah. Um, but uh, if we haven't knew each other, like uh, I would see, oh, you are good looking, you are like a uh, smart, intelligent. I, I wouldn't uh, like imagine like you are not confident, mm. but uh, now you are sharing your um vulnerability with me and I feel it's super healthy that mm. we have this conversation because probably like when we perceive others we always think uh, others are confident but uh, we um, if we don't really have this kind of uh, like a uh, open conversation then we we people individuals would think oh everyone else is confident mm. owning themselves is not yeah. but uh, when once we realize oh Everyone else, even the most successful, the most good-looking people you know, they are uh, deep in. They have their issues and they, they have doubts. It, it feels very reassuring. You realize, yeah. oh, okay, it, it's normal. And uh, I don't need to um, put, uh, blame myself down. Yeah. I, I think for some reason, like when I talk with you, having this conversation, I keep thinking about Tara more. Oh, yeah. She she said actually another um, argument. She said like, do you have a colleague like a, or a friend? You think she's so beautiful, so good looking, and so smart. She can achieve whatever uh, things in life, and you have a hundred percent confidence in her. She said, yes. Like you know, like someone around you, they are thinking exactly the same mm. about you. Yeah, and. Uh, This is like really empowering, like uh, exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah, and totally. I think I should read this book. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I know mm -hmm. it, but I haven't read it. What comes up for me is something. Um, at the beat when I was like really, like, you know, one year ago or, or a bit more, I had a panic attack because mm -hmm. I was thinking. Or I thought myself into a panic attack mm -hmm. where I was thinking, I saw my colleagues around me and I was like, they're so confident. How, how come they do it? You know, they're going to make it. They're going to make it in this coaching business. They're going to be super successful and they're going to be able to help a lot of people. But I didn't feel that confidence. I was like, where is it? I just, mm -hmm. I cannot find it in myself. Mm -hmm. And that freaked me out so much that I got into this panic attack. And then when I was out of it, I think maybe a day after, not, like really not long after, I realized, so what? I don't mm. feel it. So what? Does that mean I cannot take a step? I cannot take an action? And since then, you know, the kind of this, this new notion of confidence has, mm. has been building for me. I know that I want this mm -hmm. and I have my reasons also to believe that it's possible. Um, So I'm going to take one step and then I'll take another step and then I'll take, you know, three steps back mm -hmm. sometimes. But, um, yeah, I guess, I guess it's true that other people, mm -hmm. you know, might, might not know that they might, mm -hmm. might think similar thoughts about me or, or, mm -hmm. or someone else. Um, but I realized like we don't have to feel mm -hmm. confident. When do you ever feel confident? Mm -hmm. This is not a constant feeling mm -hmm. after maybe you've given like a, 
presentation and that went well and you're like oh wow I really I really did a good job you know I had good mm -hmm. content I did I was clear but that fades as well until mm -hmm. you have to do the next presentation or, yeah. or whatever it is that you're gonna do to, to for me I don't know you want know what confident means like mm -hmm. it's very really abstract mm. like uh, for, for example um, people might think I'm confident like mm -hmm. on stage um, I think for me I wasn't confident it's just I've been doing this so so many times I feel com comfortable yeah okay. and uh, for me I I now start to doubt the what well, concept of confidence does it really exist maybe mm -hmm. people are just comfortable maybe it's yeah. only this projection yeah, yeah that we yeah. put oh my god this person is so comfortable oh, yeah. Co confident yeah yeah and uh, you you talk about the panic uh, attack what is panic attack so i haven't had many mm -hmm. i think i've had only a few times and in for me it was where i just lost all control of my my thoughts, mm -hmm. my breathing, I went into hyperventilation, I thought I was going to die. Wow. Um, and I know many people who've experienced this in a much more regular and also more deep, I think. Um, yeah, that's how it was for me. Mm -hmm. Did you take uh, medication for it? No, mm -hmm. never. And uh, how long it lasts? Just a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. I was not alone. I was with my partner, and it, it and I ended up crying it out, mm -hmm. which was kind of like the the mm -hmm. release. What what happens afterward? Um, I'm usually well, usually like I said, it ha doesn't hasn't happened often, but I've the times I've had it, I was exhausted after. Mm -hmm. It was similar to fainting, mm -hmm. <laughs> in the sense that after that you're just completely without energy. Mm -hmm. Um. And the second they do go to a, a breakdown mode or depressed mode? Um, I experienced a sense of calm mm -hmm. after. It wasn't fun. I, mm -hmm. I felt down, mm -hmm. but I, I felt I hit base level. Mm -hmm. uh, over the time, have you um, learned some tools when it happens? What do you do? Um, yes. Yeah, so for me, I think the key is to not go with these thoughts, to not mm -hmm. go down the rabbit holes. Mm -hmm. um, so distraction, um, talk about something you see, talk about something you hear. Mm -hmm. If you're alone, try to talk to the person next to you, just have a mm -hmm. conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I know that for some people, it, you know, work, trying to um, go into meditation or mindfulness, it's a little bit tricky because it often has to do with breathing and breathing mm -hmm. is often problematic when you're panicking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think it's, it's really to get you out mm -hmm. of this panic, mm -hmm. you need to distraction or that's mm -hmm. how it was for me. Okay. Yeah. Because you know what I know what doesn't work is, is if you go start discussing these thoughts that you mm -hmm. have because they, they feel so true and strong. Mm -hmm. they, if someone next to you is like, no, but, um, you know, one of the things I've, I used to panic out about a lot is like, I've never, I've not achieved anything in my life. That was a big one for me. And if my partner would then go, no, but you've achieved this or that. And then I would just get really angry <laughs> <laughs> because no, that's not, that's bullshit. That's not worth anything. Oh, <laughs> so, you know, discussing the, the rabbit hole thoughts uh -huh. are not, not very helpful at that point. <laughs> do, do you have uh, some like uh, mm, uh, tricks to get you uh, not into the rabbit hole? Um, yeah, like, but this is, this is new to me, like the mm -hmm. laughing about it, mm -hmm. singing a song. Mm -hmm. um, my new life motto is fuck it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, those things help, help me a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, singing is also, you know, literally getting mm -hmm. a voice out. Mm -hmm. For some people, it might be screaming in a pillow. Mm -hmm. The thing that happens is you, you go completely internal. You go, you know, into freeze or fight mm -hmm. or flight. Yeah. And, and you need to find your, you need to help your body also release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, when you have an imposter syndrome, what mm. do you do? When I have imposter syndrome, um, well, I'm definitely gonna think, you know, other people have that too. I'm just like, I just don't, I don't take it so seriously anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, just stop bothering me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I, it's not that I just, I don't really understand how I got there, to mm -hmm. be really honest. I think the term imposter syndrome, almost everyone I know has imposter syndrome. Is this really a thing even? I, <laughs> I, I know per people, they are so overconfident. Like, okay. <laughs> I don't think they have very imposter uh, syndrome. But what does overconfident mean? Like uh, they, they look like shit. They think they are the most attractive person on earth. Do you really think they think that? And they really believe so. Okay. They think all women love them. Okay. Uh. Yeah, that will. Then I would have some. Yeah, I don't know if I would be convinced if they were then really confident. But yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, but for, I think most people I know do have, you know, do experience imposter mm -hmm. syndrome. I mean, the word is syndrome already makes it so heavy. Mm -hmm. It's just thoughts. <laughs> it's just thoughts mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so um at your new job your new uh, career yeah. life what do you feel different uh, than your previous uh, career what do i feel different yeah i'm free mm -hmm. <laughs> to be myself mm -hmm. and to determine yeah practical stuff like what am i gonna do mm -hmm. But also, yeah, total challenge, unfolding potential. There's more potential than I thought potential was. Mm. Um, That's for me, it has thing. been, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Um, it has been a kind of a combination of healing <laughs> and uh yeah getting close to I, I was like just thinking when you asked me how did you know what you wanted to do I, I realized just now that I think people can wake me up at night and I can have a coaching conversation with them mm -hmm. yes there's stuff I need to learn and yes there's stuff I can improve but I think I'd be happy to do that you know mm -hmm. after my initial grumpiness but <laughs> I would be fine and I think that's just, I don't know, that's great, that's beautiful. Do, do, <laughs> now do you wake up happy? Um, some days, mm. yeah. Mm. I've had a really good month, I can say that. Wow, <laughs> cool. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I really um, resonate with you, like uh, um, you understand potential, like uh, what's your original sentence? Like there's more potential than potential or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's uh, it's really great like once you find your calling mm. when you do it it's just like beyond your imagination mm. like it can bring so much more of you yeah I, exactly. uh, I think uh, for me it's uh, also very similar like uh, the other day I was uh, talking with my uh, therapist I, I told her like I am really a different person now mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I become a person that I wouldn't have imagined like it's really beyond my imagination and uh, now I'm that person and this is uh, yeah so real uh, on some level yeah yeah I can relate to that yeah. it's like I guess for me it relates to this thing you asked me yeah. like did you did you think there was something wrong with you. I always mm -hmm. knew there was this little bubble mm -hmm. of creativity and of inspiration mm -hmm. and building something and, mm -hmm. and connection with people mm -hmm. mainly. Um, it was there, but there was only this seed, you know, and now mm -hmm. I, I allow the seed to be. <laughs> I'm getting very philosophical here. <laughs> um, and, and it can, you know, grow into whatever it's going to be. And I just, I just have to be with it. <laughs> Wow, that's uh, that's so nice. Yeah, and uh, 
so is there was it a trigger like one year ago like a, how did you just say okay i this is really the thing i want to do because like i think for many people even they find the thing they want to do it's very intimidating to uh, to really do it yeah and how did you find the drive to really make the de- decision and the change your track yeah I mean, this is, so I can look back now and say all these things and like, I can just be it with it and the seed and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. that, that wasn't there last year. Mm-hmm. But when I decided I was in such need of a change, mm-hmm. I had been close to quitting my job for mm-hmm. a long time. Um, and the weekend I decided I was going to do this training, I talked to my partner and I was like, should I? quit my job already like this is gonna be this is gonna happen I don't know how but it's gonna happen and then we were like well maybe maybe let's just wait a couple of months and we said Mm -hmm. okay we're gonna um, wait three months and then revisit this this decision Mm -hmm. and then um, that was on Sunday and on Monday I got fired (laughs) (laughs) which is you know we're in Germany Mm -hmm. is not a bad thing in a lot of countries that's terrible news Mm -hmm. but in Germany that's you know Great news. Great news. Um, so from the from the aspect of financial security, uh-huh. um, for most people who that, you know here, that is quite okay. Mm-hmm. So um, I think that was one worry that I didn't have to worry about. Mm-hmm. Um, so that helped, and mm-hmm. the universe helped in that way mm-hmm. to, to fire me. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and for the rest, it was just like. I think I remember writing at some point, like I was always waiting for this aha eureka moment Mm -hmm. to be huge and Mm -hmm. present itself with firework and that (laughs) kind of stuff. But it was just this very strong, tiny gut feeling. Uh It was not this huge thing. It was just... You didn't feel huge uh, when you were fired? Did did you think, oh, oh, aha? No, that was was amazing. It was like, Mm -hmm. oh, great, freedom. I was like, oh, do I need to like pretend to be sad and frustrated now? (laughs) Did, Did... uh, did you feel like universe was doing this for yeah, you? Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. But but I mean the the decision to go and become a life coach mm-hmm. that was like okay yeah okay I need to do this mm-hmm. very very cr- like super crystal clear mm-hmm. but not a huge aha it, was, mm-hmm. it just obvi- like all of a sudden was obvious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, cool. Funny, no? <laughs> this this is uh, really really amazing. Like, um, I had a, a very similar yeah. feeling uh, last year. Like, I, I quit my corporate job. Yeah. And um, I, I think for my situation was a little bit more difficult than yours because mm. I didn't know, like, I didn't fit into this organization. Like, mm. this kind of career, mm. I, I just thought I'm not good enough. And... Mm. Uh, I thought that's what I want, but uh, and now thinking back, oh, makes sense. Like I just didn't like it. It's not my thing. That's why I was like, never be able to concentrate. Mm-hmm. Never be able really to get the point. What what's everything about? I feel dumb. I feel stupid the whole time. Mm-hmm. And uh, to accept that, okay, I'm going to say no more say stop to this career path and to really go into the uh, artistic part of me is uh, a very uh, intimidating process Mm -hmm. but uh, I think once I'm on this path it starts to become more and more clear like uh, I think uh, um, the most important thing like uh, for at least for me i feel like if i love something like if you really have a fit with something everything else comes with it like the passion you are you are passionate about it you are creative and you are uh, you uh, you do things with great quality and uh, all the sparks uh, just comes with it but when you are doing something you don't feel 
anything about it. Mm. It's so dry and uh, like it, it doesn't move forward and uh, you, you just look at the screen and uh, there's no spark, there's no creativity and there's no joy. Yeah. But uh, when you have this passion, joy, everything comes around and uh, it's just you see new poten- new possibility and uh, you understand yourself better and better more because um, by doing something you like you open your senses to your emotions and uh, once you have this you have the senses and then you uh, you react act on it and you test what works for you what don't work for you and then you have a positive loop you get better and better but when you work on something you don't like you spend so much energy on surplus you you like your hate for this job and you you just don't don't have sense of any emotions at all and you are not like moving forward because every day uh, your your all your senses tell you you hate this job and you say okay what i fear is wrong i love this job then <laughs> <laughs> I love the job. I love the job. I love, I love the, the job. job. I love the uh, job. I, you are just numbing your senses, l- yeah. numbing yourself. Yeah. And I think what you're saying mm. is, what you just said is vital. Mm. That if you do something, I mean, you're passionate about passion is a big word. Yeah. I'm always careful with that because it mm. used to freak me out. Mm-hmm. But if you do something that you enjoy or that you like, yeah. And you do more of that, it starts to grow and it starts to grow, and mm. then it, at some point it becomes this this big thing that you really want to do that you're super passionate about yeah. but it doesn't always start like that mm-hmm. um i was thinking the same thing like what's the point what am i doing here like what what are we all doing mm-hmm. you know I, this i love how you said what's the point <laughs> mm-hmm. but but what then if not this you know you've worked for it like you like you said you 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 you've worked for it a long time and thought that this is what you wanted to do but then if you realize, no, actually, no, I'm going to do something else. For me, there was this, this fear, like, I don't know what else. And I, I recognize that mm-hmm. with a lot of people also that, you know, having to know what it is that you love or what you're mm-hmm. passionate about is scary because it's something that we maybe haven't tried out. Like you were, you were saying... You need to try out what works for you and what doesn't. You're going on this path of exploration. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't done that yet, this question is super scary. Yeah. I, I think I'm very lucky on that sense. Mm. Um, I'm lucky uh, in the way that uh, I accidentally stumped on uh, comedy yeah. three, three, four years ago. And it really worked for me. Like yeah. as soon as I did it for the first time, I know I will never stop in my life. But I also know lots of people who are like me. Like they they are Chinese. They studied this uh, uh, business and they find a job. They are not happy with their job. They always change. And uh, now thinking back, I can totally see they just don't have joy, like don't have passion. Mm. They don't really like it. Mm. They they did it because it's uh, it earns money and it's uh, easy study to do and uh, it's easy study to find jobs. But uh, they didn't do it because they like it. And uh, but uh, through the years, because they get the education, they get the training, they made themselves to believe they like it just the way I did. But um, because of a lack of choice, so it's very hard to really, um, really admit to themselves, I don't like it. Mm. And uh, thinking back, if I'm not so lucky, if I haven't found out comedy, uh, I don't have any ho- other hobbies. Like I really don't, uh, before comedy, I just never thought I'm a creative. Like mm. I grew up believing like I'm really not creative. Like my mom used to tell me that uh, uh, you are you are s- not smart, you are not intelligent, you are not creative. Your only choice in life is to uh, to work hard. Mm-hmm. And I failed all my like music class, all my like uh, uh, like a creative uh, creative uh, art co- course. Like mm. I just believed I, I'm 
I'm not creative. I have no sense of beauty, no sense of art. And I remember in my bachelor study, there's even a uh, like a cold friend, so-called friend at that time. She told me, "Oh, Moni, I, um, I think like uh, I at that time I told her I I want to go to the specification specialization of accounting, mm-hmm. and she wants to go for marketing, and she told me, "Oh, you know." Accounting is for boring people and people who has no imagination. Creative people, interest people study marketing. Mm. And uh, you are boring, so you study accounting. And I was like, yeah, that's true. I am just boring. Like, because uh, like they would like say, for example, everyone else can paint. Uh, they appreciate music or oh, like uh, something else, uh, like I have great sense of colors. I have no of that. You never s- listen my scene. Uh, when I sing, it's like a nightmare. Like, uh, like uh, as, a, as a teenager growing up in China, not able to sing, it's like the, the worst thing to kill your self-confidence because Chinese people socializing by go to karaoke. Mm. And I, I couldn't mm. sing anything, and it's just so embarrassing. Every time they give me the, uh, it's my turn, we go to karaoke, and they give me the mic, and I just feel like my whole body freeze, and I, I'm just feeling I'm going to embarrass myself. And I, I was just so self-conscious, and I, I feel, okay, I don't have any talent. So before I found out comedy, mm. like I have no talent, I have no hobby, uh, and uh, I was doing this job, so it's kind of like the only source of confidence I have, because yeah, I I don't uh, understand music, I cannot paint, but at least I have a really highly paid job, uh, and uh, although I actually don't feel so confident about it, but I can brag to other people when we talk with mm. people if I brag enough people will believe i'm confident and they will believe i'm intelligent although i don't believe it Mm. and um, so i i think i'm really lucky i step upon comedy make me realize ah actually i have talent actually i am creative Uh, and once i had a taste of that then i start to look at uh, my job i realized it doesn't feel right mm. like it it doesn't feel okay and but because i have something else i can put my confidence on then i feel safe to admit to myself and to other people that i'm actually not good at my job i actually don't enjoy it but if i didn't have comedy mm. i think it would be like impossible for me to admit that because I'm not talented, I'm not creative, I'm not fun, I'm not pretty, like I believe I, I'm not pretty. And then if you take away from me this high paying job, then why, who am I? Mm. So I, I think for many people, mm. um, it's at least people I know, they are kind of like in a self-denial because they have not yet found the thing really make them happy. So it's really hard to distinguish, like uh, uh, separate themselves and that job and their yeah. self-esteem. Yeah, and I, that makes me think like this identification with mm-hmm. something that is valued in society, like mm-hmm. a high paying job or being an accountant or mm. It's it's not that I don't know if this is true. Maybe you, you can tell me if it's true or not. Like, it's not the fact that you're a comedian, mm-hmm. so that you've kind of ch- changed your identity mm-hmm. that made you able to quit that job. It's that you found in yourself the parts that are true about you, or like the the parts that resonate with you. You know that that you're creative, that you're intelligent, that you're having fun on on stage. I I feel um, what you said is true in a way, but I want to express, I think same true is that for me, it's more about uh, like um, 
att uh, the belief in myself like you know, I just feel I just feel I'm not good at anything. Mm. And uh, at least this job, I get such pay, like such salary. At least it can prove that I'm capable on some level. And um, it would be very cruel oh, to myself uh, if someone tell me you are actually not good at it. And uh, I think at that time, I wouldn't let anyone take that away from me because yeah. that's the only thing I have left to believe in myself. Yeah. Um, I think comedy, what comedy gave me is, um, is confidence. Let's, mm. I, okay, I said confidence doesn't exist. Um, mm. I think confidence or let's say like um, self-love and self-belief like a belief that uh, I was something and is independent from this high paying job. Yeah. And, uh, and that comedy just showed me a possibility. And once I believe I, I was something, once I believe I'm special, I'm unique, then with this belief, I also start to get better at many other things. Mm. And so, right in the past, I highly, um, like, ident identify myself with this job. Like, uh, uh, it's something I talk about a lot because I don't have anything else uh, to really make me feel that uh, I'm good. Mm. Um, but now, I don't have the same with comedy. Comedy just is a part of a uh, direction I'm doing. Mm. Um, and even I'm taking away, if this comedy has taken away from me, I know I still have lots of things left. And uh, even not, I, I can grow other stuff very easily. So it's, I, I think at the end, I think it's, it's about showing me a possibility knowing that I am capable, I can do things and uh, uh, let me understand the feeling I had in the past, the constant uh, struggle is not normal. It's not who I am and uh, I don't have to live with that feeling and there's an uh, option in life. Yeah. Cool. Wow. I think uh, it's a very <laughs> good uh, discussion. Yeah, thank you for sharing that also. Yeah. It's, um, you know, when, when I uh, talked with you first time, like uh, you told your story, I was like, hmm, you sound like in a parallel universe, like almost even the same timeline, yeah. like uh, uh, we are just having similar life and yeah. uh, similar struggle and similar mm. changes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Definitely. And, uh, I hope uh, some other incredible women out there or me uh, men or non-binary or whatever, um, you also feel inspired and if you are still, still in the transition, mm. knowing that uh, it's normal, we are, we all been there. Yeah. Do you have something to say with our audience? Um, yeah, maybe. It's okay. It's trust is trust that it's gonna be okay is something that I'm slowly daring to do, and it's opening up a lot. Mm -hmm. And I recognize it in your story, or it resonates with me when you're talking about. Um, I found these possibilities mm -hmm. within myself, mm. and it makes me think also of um, that I can trust that. I will deal with things mm -hmm. when they come up, mm -hmm. if they come up, as they come up, whether it's positive, negative, or in between. And yeah, I mm -hmm. guess that's what I wanted to. Cool. Wanted to add. With your coaching business, uh, how can people contact you? So my website is lucystratov.com. Um, 
I can spell it, but we yeah, I will we can put it in the link. Yeah. yeah, or you can find me at the Confident Creative on Instagram, or find Confident Creatives Club, a uh, Facebook group with a lot of artists and creatives, where we talk about things like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. So um, go find Lucy if you need a couch, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, stay healthy, stay alive. Bye-bye. Bye.